Bet First Man 2 now, live on Indiegogo. Here's another little book that I picked up from artist Bob McLeod a few years ago at a convention. It's a little primer of visual storytelling. Uh, the hows and whys of drawing comics. It's not necessarily a how-to book as in it shows you steps as in step one, step two, step three on like drawing a figure and things like that. It's little tips and tricks moreover that you want to watch out for and implement in your work while you're drawing comics. Bob started off uh, I believe uh, I first found Bob's work as an inker, but he's also a very accomplished penciler as well. And he started off in the mid 70s, late 70s. You'll know his name. He went on to create the new mutants with Chris Claremont. And uh, he had a long run doing inking at Marvel and penciling some X Men stuff and other fill in books. And then at DC, he worked on Superman. He had a long career. He still does conventions. If you like this book, uh, visit bobmcleod.com. I think you can still buy it. Let's take a flip through. 20 bucks, cheap. Uh, first and foremost, don't confuse the reader. He's got his top 10 rules of composition right here. These all hold, hold true, and it's continued on the inside back cover. You know, uh, I'm not going to read each paragraph, but rule one, have a center of interest. Two, focus. Three, use your space well. Four, position elements carefully. Five, use variety in all things. Said, I'm not going to read everything because you know what? If you like what you see, go buy the book and support uh, Bob McLeod. Uh, six, create the illusion of depth. Seven, use perspective. Eight, values. Nine, lighting. Ten, color. Uh, and if you're a fan of Bob McLeod's work, you'll just love this book anyhow, just to see some of Bob's work. Don't confuse the reader, whether in penciling, writing, penciling, lettering, inking, or, clair or coloring. It's all about the clarity. Uh, so here he just goes in and uh, gives tips and tricks. Um, this is cool. This was penciled by... Uh, I think this piece was penciled and inked by Bob right here. This was actually drawn by Bob and inked by John Beatty. So that's pretty cool. So there's fun art nuggets in here. Deciding on panel layout, why to use large panels and such. Uh, he goes in and shows uh, rough layouts, first finished pencils. So this is really nice because you can see up here what his rough layouts look like. Uh, more breakdowns that you would send to an anchor compared to the final finished pencils. And he goes into an explanation of both. Then he goes into the different type of shots. Long shot, medium shot, close up. I want to say this is from some Star Wars stuff that he drew. Yep, Star Wars. I like how he gives credit for what everything is. This is from X-Men 152. Uh, down shot, up shot. You know, straight on and what they're used for. Uh, once again, he, he credits where he got the, where he drew the stuff. This is all work that he drew. Goes into how close cameras should be, straight ons. Uh, this is a great panel from Action Comics 674. Uh, draw the figures first. I remember him uh, talking about that before. Draw the figures I mean, you want to have an idea, obviously, when he did this, he had an idea in his head that buildings were going to be behind Superman and stuff. But he's basically saying, don't draw these buildings and then draw the figure, draw the figure. And then, you know, he knew he was going to do at one point, put the, put the buildings in behind him. Uh, this is really cool. This is from New Mutants. I think he's indicating with the blue for Zipatone because he did not ink this job, I don't believe. And the detail in this work is just phenomenal. I was always a big fan of, uh, of Bob's work. So more of his stuff, use fewer panels, and he goes into why. And then why you would use more panels. 
you know, slow down time. Tall vertical panels work well for this, but of course you can use other shapes as well, which is true. And it is, you know, he's adding more panels, so it's slowing down time. I mean, if he just went from this panel, second panel, to this third panel, and then this fourth panel, you'd read it really quick. But this is slowing down time. Talking about storytelling and scene changes. Here's a nice little breakdown of how he goes into focal points and then just breaking down uh, this page here using the basic, basic shapes to show the focal points of the panels. This is his initial layout here for this page. Here's his finished breakdowns. Here he's talking about drawing three levels to add depth, foreground, middle ground, background. I mean, for a small book, this is very, very informative and well done. Here's something I talk about a lot, leading your reader's eye throughout the page. You know, up and off. Here, even though it's a conversation page, you can get more acting into the figures. It's not just talking heads. Mean Green Teen Hulk. Love that stuff. Look at that. He did a Tweety and Sylvester page in 1973. That I never knew. It was a sample page he did. Oh, there you go. Even though I looked through this before, it has been a while. Here it's breaking down about every action needs a new panel. Put the reader close to the action. You know, things like this. You see this guy in the foreground here. Um, so you get the sense that you're over his shoulder looking in to the scene. Bob does not skimp on detail. Just the compositions in these panels and the, the black placement and stuff and using gray tones nicely. He's talking about watching out for tangents. So he's showing different tangents. This isn't really great. I mean, that, this isn't great. Big tangent right here with the hat and the face. This one, the overlap, okay. I mean, you get a nice overlap, so that's fine. This one is a lot more clear. He's still obviously in the foreground with his hat overlapping his figure, so. Here he's talking about using contrast for depth. Exaggeration. So if you're interested in learning comics from a true pro who's been in the business for 50 years or going on 50 years, uh, you can't go wrong with uh, picking this book up. So it's not a how to draw book. You need a different book on actually how to draw, but this will definitely help you out with storytelling this this book is really just focused on storytelling beautiful example of his pencils right here using weather to add mood and drama here he's going into some thoughts on uh dialogue and word balloons placement of those nice moon night What's this one from? Spider-Man. Complex for simple. Another great shot of just pencils right there. What is that? A phone booth? A phone booth? Where do you see those anymore? This is from Superman. These are his breakdowns. Very cool to see what his breakdowns look like. Or maybe these are full pencils. No, it's weird because this looks like full pencils up in here with the shadows and stuff. But then down here, these look like breakdowns because he's not really rendering up as much. These are definitely breakdowns. And there you go. Uh, ends. You could scan that in if you want to practice your inking and print that out in blue. Great page to practice inking. Fantastic facial expression right here. Nice rendering. 
Looks like you used an HB lead, nice soft pencil. Very well done. So visit bobmcleod.com if you enjoyed this and uh, pick up a copy. Luke Henry, after kicking Monarch's ass to the depths of space, is back on Earth. And now he's looking to save the world from the Fourth World Foundation. Sure, he had help from a number before, but she's not helping him this time. He's got to face it on his own. He's coming for a villain known as Adonis. He'll do it. You'll be there. Back it now. First Man 2. Learning Curve.